Hello learners, Namaskar. Welcome back to the course on Organizational Behavior, Individual Dynamics in Organization. Today, we start with Module 9. And this is one of the most interesting modules of the entire course, where we actually look into learning. The thing which we are all doing, which we keep on doing, and we will do till our deathbed. So, on this note, uh, let's start the module on learning. And as part of the lecture 1, of this module, I'll be looking into the definition of learning. So basics of learning, understanding learning. I'm Dr. Abraham Sal Isaac. I'm a faculty at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So let's move to the theme of uh, today's lecture. Learning occurs when interaction with the environment leads to behavior change. So uh, I, I feel that this theme itself warrants a certain discussion. The moment I pitch this theme, I think there would be thoughts running in your mind that every second we are learning. There is every single opportunity when we go outside or when we are in the room, when we are introspecting ourselves, there are different types of learning that's happening in a real-time scenario. When you are looking into learning as such, if that learning is not creating an impact in your life, in other sense, in other words, if that learning is not leading you to a behavior change, then that learning is of no use. So on that theme, we'll start today's lecture. Let's understand the basics of learning in a, in a very clear manner. Learning can be defined specifically as the process of acquiring knowledge, skills, behaviors, or understanding through study, experience, or teaching. So there are a lot of factors that have been, uh, you know, compressed into this one simple definition. So let's dissect this definition one by one and see what specifically learning is. When you're looking into learning, it is certainly acquiring knowledge. You are here as part of this course or as, as, a, as a student of this course of organizational behavior because you have a drive to acquire certain knowledge. Now, it could be based on your requirement in industry, it could be based on your requirement in the academia, or it could be based on your interest to the discipline. Being a very generic subject, it is possible that many a student here is being a student here because of inherent interest on the topic not because of any other extrinsic motivation. So acquiring knowledge happens to be the first and the foremost aspect of learning. There is no doubt about it. When you look into training purposes or learnings associated with training, there is some skill development that's happening. You know, when we talk about things like skill development mission or when we specifically look into institutions which train for skill en enhancement, then we see that there is learning that is happening specifically with respect to skill development. Now, as the theme of the lecture says, there should be a behavior change also. Understanding that this particular behavior in this context will not be the right suitable way to go ahead. Rather, there should be a modification in our behavior and that modified behavior would be the right behavior to go ahead would be another learning. And there could be also learning that happens to study in terms of detailing on what you have, you know, uh, let's say uh, heard about something. You can research on that. Uh, many a time in this particular course itself, we, we fall back to empirical research. I take support from the textbook. I take support from empirical research papers. So all these aspects are a detailed study on the particular aspect. Another important aspect could be to learn via experience. Something which, which experience can teach you. Seldom any book or any, any, any particular uh, friend can teach. So there are certain things which we do, which we learn by doing. There are certain things we, we gain by, by, you know, uh, through the experience. When we look into, let's say, situations in organization, when the particular knowledge, because I'll be detailing this particular idea in knowledge management specifically, if we are looking into situations of, let's say, where you, sit, uh, where you are actually not willing to share knowledge 
and from this particular organization you move to another organization what happens is that the knowledge which you have gained let's say over the training over the improvement that has happened for you with you within the organization is also moving with you so those knowledge which actually should have been converted to the, to the institutional memory those knowledge is being taken back to a different organization so there there is no transfer of knowledge that's happening but let's come back to the topics of our uh, learning today where experience can also teach you experience can also make you learn things and uh, ultimately if you can teach somebody something then that is the highest learning experience an individual can have so i hope the definition though it looks very complex it is more comprehensive because it has a lot of keywords associated with that which clarifies all the different dimensions associated with learning when you're looking into learning specifically key components of learning include retention comprehension and application now if you take out any particular element either retention or comprehension or even application i would say that the learning is incomplete many scenarios in terms of let's say uh, school teaching or school learning or your learning in your universities or your higher educational institutions have happened in such a way that you are able you were able to comprehend something you were able to retain also something but interestingly when it came to application we are not taught enough the, so that we can apply those learnings in the real world scenario every now and then we face nobody is perfect in this world we see that retention comprehension and application should go hand in hand and that completes the entire cycle of learning altogether when you look into any one component specifically and you take it out your learning is incomplete needless to say that now learning can occur consciously or unconsciously and it can be influenced by factors such as let's say motivation uh, attention prior knowledge feedback and the learning environment so basically when we look into a uh, larger scheme of things we understand that if let's say you are being forced to learn something those learning or those forced fit arrangements of studying will not actually reflect or translate into learning instead if you are interesting intrinsically motivated if you have the urge to learn understand let's say let's let's take an example a particular coding a particular program let's say python or let's say uh, you are uh, you want to uh, learn something like running a cnc machine or maybe to uh, you know understand the details of a particular uh, you know engine or maybe sometimes to understand a particular uh, circuit all these aspects pertain to learning and learning will occur ultimately when you are motivated so motivation is one factor you have to have attention we we look into the zone of attention etc in in the coming classes but think of those situations in your organization you were attending some training programs you fell asleep the problem there would not have been uh, let's say the 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 speaker was not Uh, you know motivated or speaker was not interesting rather it was lack of your attention that caused that whole scenario now there are also situations where even prior knowledge or even feedback gives you some learning there there is there is a subordinate who is telling you sir i don't know whether i should tell but uh, you know if the thing would have been done in this way then it would have been better that's a feedback that's a learning that is happening right then and there and there are also situations where you actually yearn for a uh, learning environment there are organizations which are not concerned about learning in one of my earlier lectures i have talked about two situations in an organization where you have either uh, a mastery climate or a performance climate now organizations which are basically uh, driven by the performance climate they they encourage competition they encourage you know people to uh, you know actively fight against each other to achieve the target so the objectives of the organization becomes very critical whereas there are organizations which actually promote a sort of mastery climate where learning 
is more important. Knowledge acquisition becomes relevant. So let's understand uh, more on learning. Learning is a relatively permanent change in behavior. Now this is where the, the relevance or the most critical aspect of learning comes into picture. The behavioral change that occurs as a result of person's interaction with the environment. So I am getting environment cues based on that. That is a learning uh, stimulus for me and based on that stimuli if I'm able to change or correct or course correct my behavior nothing like that learning occurs when interaction with the environment leads to behavior change which is our theme of uh, today's lecture some of what we learn is explicit knowledge something which is written something which is codified and reading uh, those information or learning those information is relatively easy but there is other diametrically opposite segment which is known as tacit knowledge and tacit knowledge is less codified less available in the actual uh, platform you don't have that you have to you know sometimes people gain that, that through experience through maybe uh, informal discussions or maybe by doing a task so all these aspects uh, accumulate and you know compound to form what is known as tacit knowledge but learning from the tacit knowledge might be different difficult because you do not have a, a certain level of codification openness associated with tacit knowledge now when you look into the broad types of knowledge i have introduced explicit and uh, tacit knowledge it will be in detail uh, dealt in the in the sessions where i will be looking into knowledge sharing and knowledge hiding etc but i would like to put in a word with respect to explicit knowledge and tacit knowledge so you should understand what do you mean by explicit and implicit or explicit and tacit knowledge explicit knowledge is as I've already mentioned, formal, codified, and easily articulated. So it's it's nothing but it is tangible and can be expressed in words or numbers. So there would be a data, uh, let's say uh, you have a particular uh, pin code. Uh, let's say you, you have a particular pin code 781039. So what does this indicate? These, these are just mere numbers for anybody from outside. But as a, as a faculty in IIT Guwahati, I can relate it to this particular number that this is a pin code of this particular place. You can similarly look into other numbers which actually are a part of you know a codified data. There are pin codes, there are phone numbers, there are uh, registration numbers for cars, there are registration numbers for files of let's say uh, land movements or let's say uh, real estate etc so all these aspects pertain to what we know as what we know as explicit knowledge this type of knowledge is consciously known and can be easily communicated and shared so if somebody is asking me what's the pin code of this particular place i will not hesitate and can i can directly let him or her know these numbers which ultimately translate into the pin code but when you actually look into something like tacit or implicit knowledge it is informal it is more experiential it's informal experiential and difficult to articulate or codify so this makes the 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 transfer of tacit knowledge all the more difficult which i'll 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 try to ascertain in the in the module where i'll be looking into knowledge sharing knowledge hiding etc so it is easy that when you look into uh, explicit knowledge it is easy to share but when you look into tacit knowledge it is deeply rooted in personal experience intuition insights and practical know how so a person who has gained let's let's look into the psychology of why uh, you know it is difficult to share tacit knowledge there could be situations where you have learned this particular knowledge or you have gained this uh, particular piece of information with great effort you have you have studied it you have you know tried to work let's say years to understand the process it might be as simple as working um, working of a machinery but a very complex machinery it has taken you years to formally understand let's say uh, erection and commissioning of a particular equipment or it could be that you uh, you have taken years to understand a particular chapter in mathematics so it's it's very unlikely that you are going to share that particular knowledge like that 
you will take some time you will try to you know check the benefits and losses associated with that you will also be very much particular that okay i have got this information guy i have got this knowledge after strenuous hard work after uh, you know stringent schedules following that but why should i actually share that so that makes the sharing of tacit implicit knowledge more difficult whereas when you look into explicit knowledge it is codified it is available it is well articulated it it is not based on any intuition it is not based on any insights it is not based on any personal experience these are written codified rules or codified statements which you can just take and read so this makes the difference between explicit knowledge and implicit knowledge when we look into learning we have to understand learning from different perspective one it's learning is sometimes taken for granted that's a clear perspective that people uh, who are associated with learning tend to take there are segments of people who differ who have a different opinion who have uh, a different perspective altogether which i'll be discussing uh, shortly but when we actually look into learning for granted in the taken for granted perspective learning is described in very absolute terms as an essentially reproductive memorizing activity so when you are in let's say in in school you are sending your kid to school they are to a certain level certain extent they are memorizing the particular aspect or whatever they are learning it could be a, a poem it could be a a, a prose it could be a, 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 let's say even formulae all these aspects are certainly essentially reproductive memorizing activities so if we take uh, this perspective of taken for granted perspective learning and knowledge it knowledge and learning are perceived as congruent so we do not actually differentiate that much between learning and knowledge when it is we are going with the perspective of taken for granted so uh, you have a knowledge and learning happens naturally that is the the spirit of the whole uh, theme where you look when you look into learning as taken for granted people tend to equate knowledge with what might be called discrete units of information discrete units of information or nothing but facts and learning is consequently the transfer of these discrete units into the head of the learner so you you break down the entire scheme of things or entire content whatever it is that is to be learned into smaller fragments and those fragments you break down those the entire uh, content into smaller fragments and those fragments those discrete units of information or simply put facts they compound and make out or evolve as the the particular content of or the knowledge repository now when you look into the different other perspectives of learning learning becomes thematic there is a approach when where learning is considered more thematic the thematic character actually manifests itself in the fact that the people in the category start to introduce various qualifications and distinctions as they describe their conceptions of learning as well as their methods of study so learning essentially will not be just one thing more than that let's say you associate uh a degree to a particular understanding of a, a particular discipline you you associate correlate a particular uh, distinction to a particular mastery of a certain uh, subject so all these aspects pertain to the thematic understanding of learning now when you look into thematic understanding there are different themes that have emerged in this thematic understanding or the thematic learning approach the first of these distinctions concern participants reporting themselves as becoming aware of the influence of the context of learning on what you should learn and how you should set about it in the previous learning approach if you have uh, noticed that whatever is given your way whatever is coming your way whatever is given to you that piece of information is to be learned so that is a situation where you hardly find any difference 
between knowledge and, and, and particular learning associated with that. So that we have already seen. But in this context, where uh, this theme, the context of learning becomes important. What you should learn and how you should go about it becomes important. So there are, there are processes where you, know, you have to be trained in a particular program. So it becomes essential that you should be focusing on that program and how you should learn that that also becomes relevant. Quite a large proportion of the participants make this distinction, the essential nature which seems to be this uh, criticism of learning in school as I've already mentioned as an activity which to a large extent has become stereotyped and routine guided only by the needs and the principles of schools themselves. Some schools would, would, would follow a certain, certain pattern, S some schools will follow a certain other, other syllabus. Let's say we have in India, we have the CBSE, ICSE. So it, it's based on the principles that are being already codified with respect to the particular school. Based on that, we make some distinction that is more stereotype. Perhaps the most interesting distinction concerns the fact that at certain points, some of the participants actually report themselves as having started to think about the nature of what is to be learned or what is learned. So this becomes uh, the critical distinction between the different themes of thematic learning particularly. Now let's look into a case where you look into behavior modification for promoting individual learning at Tech Growth Solutions, which I've taken from the book. Background is that Tech Growth Solution is a software development company, recognized the need to enhance individual learning initiatives among its employees to maintain a competitive edge in the rapidly evolving tech industry. Despite offering various learning resources, the company observed inconsistent engagement levels among employees in pursuing continuous learning opportunities. So the key challenge appears that the HR team at Tech Growth identified a need to employ behavior modification techniques to encourage consistent and proactive engagement in learning activities among its workforce. So the primary challenge was to motivate employees to embrace a learning mindset and actively seek opportunities for self-improvement. So learning does not stop there. Learning, as, as the theme of the lecture runs, learning is more than just textbook reading. More, learning is more than just experiencing a thing. Learning is more than just interacting with others. Learning is a more comprehensive process. Learning is a more detailed process. So let's have different approaches Let's, uh, we have seen different approaches, in fact, in industry and otherwise that have been taken towards learning. The first and the foremost approach is setting clear objectives and feedback mechanisms. So I, I have, I venture into an organization, let's say I'm, I'm given a particular task. Now the task has come with a deadline, the task has come with what are the deliverables, based on that I start working. You can relate it with your assignments that you do on a day-to-day -day basis in your organization. Let's say you are a student. Now, every single uh, subject or the course will come with certain assignments, some, some tests, some uh, you know, presentations, some group tasks, etc. Those things are evaluated and based on that, you are given a mark or given a score. Now, let's take an example of you being an entrepreneur. So, there is some level of objective that is set that you have to register your organization. You have to, once registered, you have to actually think of developing the organization from the scratch. So, there are certain objectives and based on the feedback, you learn. So, setting clear objectives and feedback mechanism happens everywhere. It's not particular to, let's say, student-based arrangement, student-based setup. It is not particular only to industry. This is the most universal approach that has been observed when it comes to learning. You, you give a, a particular uh, objective and based on the objective, how you perform, a certain feedback is given. So when you are looking into learning per se, this happens to be the most important approach that universally the world has taken. 
you are given an objective i repeat again and based on that objective you perform and based on that performance you are given certain feedback now another important aspect or approach that learning has seen especially from from skinner's uh, time or behavioral psychologist period specifically uh, or uh, you know even the pavlovian experience uh, uh, you know experiments also uh, actually support the statement and that's where reinforcement comes into picture so this is yet again another approach positive reinforcement it starts from when you are a kid uh, you do a good behavior you are given a chocolate or you are given something which the kid likes or uh, when you are you know uh, let's say you are doing a, a stunning work in the organization you are being recognized as maybe the employee of the month or employee of the week something like that so this positive reinforcement itself has emerged as a very uh, important approach towards learning another important approach is gamification of learning now this is more uh, connected with industry nowadays when you look into gamification of learning it is nothing but bringing some gamified elements gaming bringing some game elements into the context of learning it could be based on let's say badges levels or maybe uh, you know uh, activities that would take you to different platforms so all these are gamified elements that are being brought in the context of learning so what happens is this uh, has translated as a very effective approach even on those learners who are actually inherently not interested in learning so the result or the way they actually see the gamified elements that are promoting or those features or those elements are actually promoting learning so it might not be that the individual is intrinsically interested there could be situations where he or she is interested intrinsically interested but there are more situations where they are not very keen but the gamified elements within the whole whole scheme of the learning will bring the interest will actually elicit the interest to for the particular individual so gamification of learning has seen a uh, uh, drastic success especially within industry especially within training programs especially within you know learning of different aspects so even in the work schedule you are seeing so you are seeing gamification of learning being clearly brought into uh, as a new perspective or new approach towards learning and then there are also social learning networks you always fall back to as observational learning it's it's hardly a world where you actually go to a classroom you learn that that, that is there and with the advent of uh, you know uh, let's say online portals like this you are able to study you are able to learn but that said there are certain experiential learning that happens there are certain social learning networks that can be coming up as an approach or that that emanates as an approach towards learning where you you tend to see that particular individual you know within within your organization there are uh, some professional circles where they actually exchange the knowledge where they actually try to train the junior workforce so this is a classic example of social learning networks there could be other situations where you actually tend to uh, get trained from other maybe faculty members or trainers who are otherwise not accessible to you social learning networks so all these approaches have emerged and it's not only the the fundamental setting clear objectives and feedback mechanisms that are at play there are also other approaches like positive reinforcement gamification of learning social learning networks etc so uh, to conclude the first lecture of this module let me tell you one thing which i would like to reiterate again learning is not mere reading learning is not mere observing it is more than that it is a more complex process and to the complexity the different approaches have tried to make it simpler when you are given an objective and they are trying to give you a particular feedback there is a learning that's happening which is irreplaceable when you are actually put up in an environment where you have features of experiential learning the learning process is actually getting you know reflected there when you are actually uh, bringing in gamified elements to a learning context 
even the people who are not interested are suddenly become interested in learning so these are the different approaches or these are the different statements which categorically show that learning is not a simple process we we'll look into the complexities of learning in the coming lectures of this module till then take care thank you for listening to me patiently we'll see you in the next class bye bye